This video was brought to you by my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. You know, I'm not a big fan of the state, <laughs> but regarding the state design pattern, I didn't realize its value until recently when I did some research and I tried to process all the information on the problem that it tries to solve and I noticed that I was missing a lot by avoiding it. I understood the problem that it tries to solve, how it approaches this, this problem and how it provides a solution for that problem. And I realized that, man, I was losing a lot by avoiding it. So let me guide you through the, the creative process that I passed through to understand this pattern and also how did I implement it on Kitchen Tales in Godot Engine. So let's get started. So to understand the value of the state pattern, we first need to understand how object-oriented design and how object-oriented programming works. So let's go back to the basics. What is an object? What is this type of data that we work and we call an object? An object is a set of data and process. So we have the variables and the constants and also the methods and functions. The set of data that we have, the set of values that we have in each variable or constant is what we call a state. So when an object has a, let's say it has a Boolean variable and this variable is set to true. So the state of this object is the whole set of the values of its variables. If it has a, well, a single Boolean variable, it can only be on two states, right? So it can be only on a state where this value is on or, or true, or when this value is off or false. When we have two variables, let's say we have two Booleans, we start to have a exponential problem because now we have four states the combination of each of the states of the of these both variables and this can grow and this can actually snowball a lot when we start to have variables that the actual value can be anything like strings for instance or colors we have uh, we have a lot of colors let, let me research how many colors we have with the RGB system RGB system uh, total colors. I'm not good with math, <laughs> I must say that. Okay, so with a 32-bit system, we have about 4 billion colors that we can have with a single variable. So with a single color variable, we can have a huge, huge amount of colors. And each of these colors, theoretically, 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 the theoretically can build up a huge amount of states. Each of these states, uh, when we change a value, so let's say we have an object that is built up of only constants. So all its properties, all its data, it's constant. This object can have actually only a single state. It can be only into a single state, even though these values allow for a lot of more states. But the value, of the, the, the state, the state, amount of states that this object can be since it's using only constants is only one. This is because when you have an object, uh, when you change these values and when you allow for the changing of these values, uh, what happens is that you have a mutation. This is what we call when an object changes from one state to another. So let's say we have an object with a variable, a Boolean variable, with its value set as true. If in the middle of the program, it set its value to false. This that just happened, it's called a mut mutation. So that said, what is the value? What is the thing that the state pattern tries to provide? What is the solution and the problem that it tries to provide? When you are designing a program, you try to simulate what are the possible states that an object can be and also what are the set of states that the whole program the whole application can be so you try to simulate okay this can happen so if this happen and this is in this state this can happen as well so you try you try to simulate all the possible outcome right so the state machine the, the state pattern actually tries to scope the possible states in which an object can be so let's say you have uh, a character and this character can be uh, walking, dashing, or idle. There, there is only three states that this object can be, right? 
So you can say that when it's dashing, it has a given velocity. This is only this is the only thing that changes between the dashing, the walking, and the idle. So let's work only with this speed or this velocity variable. When it's dashing, the variable can be the highest amount possible within the, the scope of your game. When it is walking, it can be a, a middle ground. And when it is idle, it can be zero. So you scope down your project into only three possible states. And this works as kind, kind of like if these states were supposed to be constant. So when you have a mutation, you don't have a mutation within the, the velocity variable. You have something which we call a state machine. And this state machine will tell which of these state is the the actual the actual uh, the current actually sorry the current value so which is the current state and this state machine will try to handle which is the current state meaning that there can only be one state active at a time knowing that we know all the possible outcomes from a given object so if it can only be within these three states uh, another state is not possible unless you have a mutation within these three states. So if you change the velocity of a the, the, the dash state, for instance, you have a mutation and you lose control over this design that you created, over this architecture that you created. So this is how I understood the state pattern. If you try to analyze these, all of these uh, patterns that we have with object-oriented design, you start to, to see kind of like a trend. Uh, which is something that I was supposed to know already, but I didn't. Uh, let, let's talk about, for instance, the strategy pattern. What is the strategy pattern? The strategy pattern tries to encapsulate conditionals in an object. So instead of having a mutation, instead of branching your logic, instead of having an if and else statement, instead you change how the object will behave by changing what is the current strategy that it was supposed to, to use further in the, in the running of this application. For a command, you have an encapsulation of a method. So you pick an object, a method, and you transform this, uh, this method into an object. And for the state pattern, you pick up the possible states, so the combination, the, the set of values that the, the variables of this object can be, and you turn this into a new object. So this is my creative process. This was what I passed it through to understand what the state pattern was supposed to provide to us. So let's see how did I implement that in Kitchen Tales. So I'll just, it will be just an overview. It won't be a tutorial, okay? Okay, so let's start from top to bottom so we can understand the whole uh, architecture of this design. Here I have the state machine, which is what will handle what is the current state active. So if we open that, all that it does is that it will transit, transit between these objects, these states, uh, turning one of them active and the other uh, unactive. So this is basically all that it does. But uh, since I'm also working with uh, some commands, we'll see that uh, a bit later, I also added something to this state machine, which is that it will delegate commands to this, this state. So instead of that trying to make a command execute right away, we will instead ask this state machine to tell a state to execute a command, okay? So uh, it passes through two delegations, so the state machine delegation, the state delegation, and then the command. This is because when we, if I open here the state machine, we can see the, the state, so we can be on these states. And if I open this state, uh, actually let me open the scene tree here. You can see that it has a set of possible commands that can be executed within this state. So if I open this state, we can see that when it is turned active, it will also turn all its children, which are commands, active as well. And when it do so, it will allow these commands to be executed. And then when it receives a command, it will try to search if this command exists within its hierarchy. So if a command was delegated to a state and this state doesn't have this command within its hierarchy, this command won't be executed. So this will prevent, for instance, uh, let's say I want a character to prevent a character actually from dashing when it's jumping. 
I can just remove the dash command from the jumping state. And you can see that <laughs> how many layers of design pattern I am in. So uh, we have the finite state machine, so the state patterns. We have the command patterns. And also we are using the observer pattern here as well. So to mutate the uh, states of the state machine, these commands will send a signal telling to this state machine what is the state that it was supposed to transition to. We have here the false state. So if the false state is finished, so if you open here, it finishes when the actor is on the floor. So we can see that here. When the character is on the floor, this false state, this specific false state, which is the false state of the single jump false state, or the, the fall command within the single jump false state, will tell the state machine to change its state to idle. This is how the state machine transitions between the states. A command will tell it to transition. This allows me so to tell what is the specific state that a specific command within a specific other state will transition to. And this allows me to foresee very clearly what will be the possible transition. So if, a, if this object reaches a given state, I will know probably, <laughs> hopefully, how did this uh, object reach this specific state just by analyzing what are the, the comments from the pre previous state and so on and so forth until we backtrack what caused this state to be active in this specific time of the of the application of the game in this case now i can tell game because we are messing with games now for instance in the wall state it can stop walking it can jump it can perform another walk which will change the direction so it will go back to this walk actually it won't even transition to any other state it will just execute this command with the updated direction we also have the fall so if the character is walking and it reaches an edge a cliff and it starts falling so it will go to the single jump fall state which will allow it to perform another jump and with that i was able to implement my character movement re-implement actually it was working but i saw that i will lose track of the logic so i decided to implement the state pattern and i had to refactor everything but now everything is working again so you can see that the character can do everything it could before but now i have a clear sight of what is happening how did it reaches a given state how uh, what are the available things that this object can do in this specific state and i can start to design other characters such like a enemy a boss etc because now i can just pass a state or an action that this object should perform this enemy for instance this boss can perform and i know what are the, the states that it will transition to so it will be very very nice to try and test this and stress this out to get content for kitchen tables so that's it that was my design process to understand the state pattern to understand what i could achieve with that and how i implemented it in kitchen tales using godot engine if you want to get this exact implementation i will put the link to the project in the links below in the description and also in the pinet comment and also i will put a link to the specific pr where i implement this design pattern so you can understand all the the process that i passed through all the steps that i passed through to implement that in Kitchen Tales. Also, don't forget to follow Kitchen Tales by following me on each IO. The links will be in the description as well. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time.